everybody. Welcome to the book cover student challenge review. We have lots of different book covers to review. Look at all these book cover submissions. Another great round of submissions from you guys. So I'm going to spend another two or three minutes talking about kind of updates and what's going on while we're giving people a chance to kind of see the live notification and pop on. And if you miss the live notification, this will automatically be posted on all the Facebook groups. And I'm also going to upload it to YouTube so you can have access to that if you're one of those users who happen to not have Facebook. So anyway, just giving a couple of minutes here, I just, in about 20 minutes, I'm going to do a post. It's going to go live and, and, and post in 20 minutes on my Facebook page, but afterwards I'm also going to share it in the Facebook groups. And I also sent a Udemy email out. I'm doing a very special $9.99 on each one of my courses, and it's only for four days only. So Udemy has changed the way they do coupons, and they only give us a chance to do certain prices for only a certain amount of days in a month. So if you see this, it's pretty rare. So just take advantage of it in the post. I'm going to go ahead and share what I have here. In the post, I'm going to tell you a little bit about each class, because some of you guys might not know the other classes that I offer, and there might be a really good next step class for you or an intermediate class if you're already kind of going through a class. And I kind of outline each class and kind of what level I kind of recommend that class for. So you can read all of that when those posts all go out or when those emails all go out today. So it's going to be until, I believe, Friday, but I would go ahead and take advantage of it. Those coupons will automatically expire. And one more thing before I get down to business is I have an Affinity Design Masterclass. Not just Affinity Designer, but the Affinity Suite. So we're doing Publisher, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and the mobile apps. And I'm doing this with another instructor, Jeremy Hazel, and we're going to be teaching that together. Hopefully that'll be ready by next week. I just finished my last Affinity Publisher section where we created a really cool cookbook and that'll be how I kind of teach publisher. And then one last thing, and I promise I'll get right to business, is I do would love, love, love if you enjoy these student design challenges I do with you guys, or you enjoy any of my classes, I would absolutely love a review. So if you don't mind leaving a review on my Udemy courses, or I teach on Skillshare. So if you're on Skillshare or Udemy, I would love a review on any of my classes. That's the best way you can help me out as an instructor teaching online. So let me go ahead and refresh the page on my other computer so I can see your live comments and make sure the audio is working because that would be a shame if I did an hour and a half video and there was no audio. I would probably cry. That would be the saddest thing. What's a review without audio? So let me know if you have any problems viewing anything. There I am, I've got nine people live. And of course that number changes. A lot of people are in India and other countries and they just can't get up at two o'clock in the morning. I totally understand. You can just watch it later. Okay, so Luke, you're supposed to be working, but hey, you should just watch this instead. This is gonna be way more fun than working. Now I don't wanna get you in trouble, but all right, let's begin. I have, I'm gonna start in reverse alphabetical order. So Wendy, you can say, hey, thank you. You get to go first. So I'm going to start off with Wendy, and let me go ahead and collapse this so I can kind of get a preview before I drag some of these into Photoshop. Oh, my voice is cracking. It's early, too early in the morning for me. It's 10 a.m., so I'm still kind of uh, waking up. Okay, so this one is really enjoyable. She actually has two of them, a couple of them. So let's do the witch's inheritance first. Let's look at the mock-up. Okay, so the witch's inheritance. Let me get, I should have done this already, but I'm just going to get my little red marker, my little teacher red marker open. Hopefully I don't have to use it a whole lot, but it's great for pointing out anything I want to talk about. So let me go ahead and sketch on this. Okay, great. All right, so we are ready for the first review. So first of all, I love all the mock-ups you guys have found, and you didn't just use the same ones. I've noticed a lot of you guys use mock-ups from different companies. And I like the diversity of seeing a mock-up like this. So I like the presentation. The mock-up looks really fabulous. I'm loving the colors here. So the colors are fantastic. And there's kind of this theme that goes from the front cover to the back cover. And it wraps around. So it's really nice. Uh, what I like to have in terms of when you have a book cover on the bookshelf. And I did a lot of book cover, studied a lot of book covers for my latest class where we do book covers. So I got to go to Barnes & Noble. And I spent hours looking at covers to find out what's really grabbing my attention. 
And I realize having a little contrast in your front cover really helps to grab attention on the bookshelf. So that could mean a pop of color. It could even just mean um, kind of a different material like a silver foil stamping or some kind of effect that kind of shines on the light because I noticed those books really caught my attention. And some of the top selling books had some kind of bevel and boss effect or something that kind of made the book look more premium and kind of shine. So I think this is one of those books that can really benefit from that, perhaps some embossing on your title, you know, do a little embossing so it kind of really, it has its tactile, you can kind of feel the letters kind of come out, that's what embossing is, you can kind of feel it. You see that a lot in book covers. So that would be a good idea. I like the idea of how the witch is halfway covered because it's kind of intriguing, kind of a mystery. So I really like that aspect of it. I think your um, balance is really good. This is a great size for an author name and you still have this as the main focal point. So I think this is really, really awesome. I think just adding a little bit of that contrast because everything is kind of in those cooler colors, darker colors, just having something that's maybe, maybe it's just whitening the witch or maybe it's just doing a bevel and embossing effect or having something that really shines that kind of really brings your attention to the book. But, and maybe just a little spacing right here between these two words, not much. And you might be able to make that a little bit of a thinner weight inheritance because you have such a thick, unique typeface on the top. So I'm just looking at some live comments every once in a while. Yeah, you can hear and see me perfectly great. And good morning, everybody. Okay, and someone needs to talk to me, but maybe after we're doing live, I can uh, figure that out. Okay, so let's do the other one. This is kind of a more detailed version. I think someone sending me a last minute book cover. So this is kind of a more detailed look at the spine. And let me zoom out because it's not the I know Facebook downgrades some resolution, so I'm trying to figure out a better way for you to send me high resolution stuff. But I like the spine. Once again, a sense of contrast because everything is kind of in the same color family and it is kind of blending together. But I like the continuity. I think the spine looks perfect. I like how this is horizontal down here. It kind of adds a little bit of dimension here. You didn't feel like you had to stuff the author in the same manner. And all this looks really good. I like uh, what I would do is break up that large box of text, maybe make it three short paragraphs because people see a long paragraph, they kind of, their eyes glaze over. So somehow breaking up this large paragraph here might be helpful in making this a more appealing block of copy to read. But well done. I really love your mock-up and presentation. And you also have a cookbook. So look, it's the cookbook. So I like this a lot. Um, so European cuisine, uh, a taste of the old world. So you kind of really set the tone for the book. I think the style matches kind of the, the the type of food that you're creating. I think this looks really good. Let me see if you have another picture here of this. I think a more detailed picture. Let's open it up in Photoshop and take a look. So what I love about this, I'm gonna go zoom out all the way. Let me see if I can't collapse that just a little bit. I don't need all this stuff. There we go. So we, what I love about this is it's very accurate. So when you're setting up a design file for like a book printing, you're going to need to have the spine. You need to have the spine in the middle set up just like this. You're going to have your cover on the right and you're going to have your back on the left. And you're going to have some, some of them that are not just hard book or some that are hard book that have a jacket that kind of fold around to the inside. You have this inside jacket spread right here. This is exactly how you would set this up for the printer. It's kind of one big long piece that they'll print and then they'll wrap everything around the book. So this is exactly how you would set it up. I'm glad that they did this so you can kind of see how you would set up a real book file. Uh, you don't just send in a front cover and send in a back cover. It's all connected and wraps around. But I really like the contrast here. There's more contrast with this book because you have this kind of wider color. So when you open up the page, it doesn't all blend in. So I like the contrast here. I like the texture here. Um, the only thing that might throw me off is just this little box that goes over here. And um, you might've just put it there for readability. Um, but it, uh, I, I think without that box, just here in the front, it might look a little more clean. Or maybe if you made, made it straight across, but I can kind of see this little box here. It almost looks like a cutout like this is cut out. So maybe making this a brighter, just a little bit of a brighter color. So you could tell that's a box on top of another box. So it doesn't look like this gray box is just cut out awkwardly. So maybe changing the color of this little bar right here. I think the, the typeface works well with this particular cookbook. And I like how you 
have these reviews here. What I might do is for this, I might put that on a separate line and, and also italicize it or bold it or kind of differentiate this type from the, the regular um, one as well. So just to kind of, so right here, just make, well, you kind of did that with the um, parentheses, but just maybe bold italic. It looks like you did italic here and it might just be because um, so certain things you do italics and certain things you don't. I would also put barcodes in white. I know that's not as exciting, but sometimes those readers can be very picky. So make sure you put that in white. I love your three uh, photos. I think they have, they're very different. And I think that works well. I think you might benefit from one that's closer up. So maybe zoom in on one of these and have a tight shot. And then you can have your zoomed out whole plate shot too, just to have more variety in your photography. But awesome job, Wendy. I like how you did two different ones. That was fun. Okay, so Vikram has, you have a couple of them. And this is organic farming. So let's take a look at what the book like, looks like in the mock-up. So this is the mock-up. Nice contrast here with your spine. So that's really going to stand out on the shelf. And you have kind of some different colors here. And I like your photography. Let's be a picky here and open it up in Photoshop and take a look. So organic farming. So what I might do is these two items feel a little disconnected. So what I might do is close the gap here just a little bit, bring maybe farming up to right here. So these feel like one united title. So right now the gap is a little too much right there. And I love your photography. I think that works fine. You have kind of a tight shot and then you have kind of a zoomed out shot. I think that works fine. I kind of like how you have this, this, this concept's really neat kind of putting your, or the kind of different items. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. So you have like tomatoes and you have some kind of green vegetable here. I think this concept would be kind of interesting to focus on if you wanted to simplify your front cover a little bit, maybe just have one photo and then make this a little bigger, which, you know, it's going to be hard because it's a pretty long word. But I like this idea of putting the letters and putting the fruit inside of that. I think that looks good. I would probably make this type just a little bit smaller just to give yourself some more margin. You want to have nice, thick margins when it comes to book covers. They're very picky about that. Printers are. So just being careful about making sure you have nice, breathable margin. And I think you'd benefit from having a photo here. And maybe instead of two photos on the front, you focus on one photo, have one focal point, and maybe shift the second photo, maybe this top one over to here. I think that would look really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Ooh, we have this nice tiger shot. So tigers, let me go ahead and open that up. I just wanted to give you a kind of a look of what the final little product looks like. And then we can open up. I like how people send it to me both ways because now I can really dive in and critique it pretty good. So I think the photo is very compelling. I think you got a great photo there. What I would do is maybe work on the, um, the type a little bit. You might need to tighten it just a little bit here for the same reasons of the first book cover to make sure they're kind of a united title. And I'm not talking about too close, just a nudge closer. And what I would do is the focal point of this is the tiger's eye. That's the focal point. So we don't want the type and the eye to be too close. So what I might do is take the title and just shift it downwards a little bit just so you can let that focal point really stand alone because that's what I'm drawn to is that first eye and you don't want to put your title too close to that because then you have kind of two competing focal points or two things that are competing for your attention. And I would make sure your title is nice and readable. You might need to change the color on this just to make sure it, it's readable on top of the photo. And same thing with margins, just add a little more margins on both of those things. And I think you got a really nice, compelling image. So good job selecting a good image. Okay, so we're gonna move on. So we have, we're gonna go ahead and open, I think they just have one cover, or they just have one side and that's okay. You didn't have to do a backside, you didn't have to do a spine. Let me get a quick drink of water. Your task was just to do a book cover. If you did the spine in the back, that's just extra bonus. So first of all, I like the contemporary type. And what I like most about this is the overall layout and composition. Uh, this is like kind of a mystery figure. I think this photo and the, the treatment of the kind of the pinkish magenta color, I think the photo is perfect. It's perfectly placed. 
I might even just brighten up kind of the character a little bit. I like the darkness of the character, but maybe just for printability, just overall, the whole image, just lighten it maybe 10% or just kind of bring out some of those highlights just a little bit more. But I love the shadow. I love the mystery of that photo. I think that is perfect. I don't think the kind of the music notes match up here because it does kind of make it look more, more childlike. Um, and, and, and this is just so mature and so interesting that I think you, you, you probably don't really need to have those, just extra stuff. Uh, what I might do is zoom in on the character just a little bit more so you don't have all this extra space. So maybe making the character, maybe, let me go ahead and get rid of all this red stuff. Maybe make zoom in on the photo to make the character maybe like this. So you're really kind of getting an emotional connection to that person and really focusing on that as your sole uh, focal point. In terms of the typography, I like the type. I think it looks really modern and slick with the photo. I don't necessarily um, think you need the, the T extended down. I think that just what would be interesting if it added to the concept in some way. So the guitar, heart of music, so if this turned into a guitar or something, that might be interesting. But since it's just a straight, it doesn't add anything to the concept. I might just kind of trim that and keep it kind of standard. If you want to have the heart of music, I think you have a really compelling, this is compelling enough, so you don't have to do anything to spice up the title. I think you can have a very plain title, brighten up your photo, make them a little bigger, make him the focal point of the cover. I don't think you need to do anything fancy with the type. But I really like this overall, I like the background you put it on, the setting, the purple. Purple, I, I kind of associate with, with guitar and music for some reason, so I think that was a great choice. Hi, Vikram, you just came on live. I just, hopefully you didn't miss your critiques. I just did you. Okay, so Tamara, let's go ahead and do her. So this was about a book, I think I can get the plot right, where um, there was a wife murdered of, a um a prominent person in politics and and so they're lonely and trying to deal with everything that happened but um, this was one i think i have a better one i have a better one that's more zoomed in that she sent me and it's somehow out of order but i will get to it maybe i can just go ahead and review it with this and then review the high res image it's not coming in order okay so book cover so this is the entire book cover suite so she is a published author i believe so that's pretty neat that we have a real author amongst or in our midst. And I think this is kind of a really compelling photo. I think I have a better resolution photo that I can show you. But when you see it, you'll see a nice, crisp, wonderful Photoshop work that they did here. I think it's a very compelling image. It's very interesting and unique. I think um, we can find just some ways we can change the typography a little bit. So her name was Jewel Rain. I think that's all fine. I think you might need to have some more spacing here between Jewel and Rain because you don't want your name to be read as part of the title. So you could put the author name up here or you can just have this, um, you can't put that lower. So you may just have to find a way to tighten the title here and then have the author name here. But I love the Photoshop work. If you're in one of the Facebook groups, you'll see the high resolution one. I'm gonna try to pull that up by the end of all this, but I really like the Photoshop work that she did with this photo, it's very compelling. All right, next we have kind of some different things here. So this one, she took original one. So let me find the original one. So this is the original book and she redid this. So this is kind of the original book and she redid this. So I think this is the one that we kind of messaged back and forth and I asked her kind of which one she did and I think I got this correct. Um, so this is, let me go ahead and open this in a different thing. So I really like this cover quite a bit. So you have kind of this kind of faded look. It kind of gives it a, a, a different kind of feeling to it. I really like how it's kind of wispy and, and, and soft. And I like this reflection here. I think this is really good. And what I like about this is you kind of have this division here. So you have this man and he's looking at a reflection of himself and it's also reflected in the type. So you have kind of this pink, but that's also kind of a reflection going on with the typeface. And I think that's a And maybe which one. Um, 
So let me just, I'll have to go. So her, her the original. I don't know which one. I'll go to kind of clarify, double guessing which one the original. The review, I promise, some later date. So Sima. Okay, so Stephen King. Has anybody read this book? I love Stephen King novels. So this is a, a review of a Stephen King novel. Stephen King has kind of this way that he does his type of his name. So I definitely probably would keep the original, but I know you're just trying to reconceptualize what you would do. This look, in photo, is uh because he's a so that's good. Sometimes his title can fiddle to it. Is that correct? I feel like this is low. See it higher up, but I can bring the picture here. It's okay. Figure out maybe we can capture the attention. Maybe there's of some sort draw the person really detailed effect. That's it. Because then you have this kind of silhouette. So it's super contemporary and you just or you have this really good photoshopped look to it. Um, like kind of your attempt here. We have a couple of Stephen King novels that were redone. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, I got the latest update. You sent me updated files. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overall book. So we have a front and we have a back. And uh, let me see. Some of these are the is a lot so or so in woods and dust we have a sure I like the um but the burn of betrayals so um like I like the blue it's really nice all the back looks great the layout looks great I like how you on the other side but maybe if I knew a little bit more about the book that would be helpful too and maybe the next time I'll have you guys send me a synopsis of your book so I can part of book design is work it is the design work look but a lot of it is, does it explain what out how you know what's the overall of the book and how are you saying that in a unique and clever way and so part of it is knowing and, and a lot of these I do know the the theme but I didn't ask him what out. But the burn of betrayal, it just sounds like someone got betrayed and he's got a lot of anger and, and, and he's got revenge on his heart. So that's kind of what I'm taking out of the book. If that's what the book is about, then you nailed it. Um, but if it's not what the book is about, then we need to kind of rework and make the that quick books out there. they're going to be like the photo and if synopsis was and 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 that here's kind of a more detailed work of the photoshop work that he did the burn of a train one of those books that might benefit since you have a lot of texture here i would not put texture on the type that's a whole lot of texture contrast I might do white type do like a bevel kind of embossing on the lettering which was actually on the physical book that would look really cool I think so here we have four let's, let's go ahead and open do lots of projects we can't spend but there's one which we'll probably spend more time on this kind of has a cool 90s vibe to it kind the 90s for some reason but it kind of a nostalgia uh, so for the young bro because traveling to be for a love rich so 
like this. Um, I don't know if you did all but that's kind of cool, right? Here. Looks like it could be from Shutter. I see a little thing, but I like this little bottom part. I think it's a lot going on, but you're trying to describe traveling, young people, and have a title. So I just wonder if there's a way we can unite these two photos without being so jarring. And it could be that you have black and white people and a full color travel, or we tone down. Next, I think this looks balance edges, full stuff, did clean. I think you kind of named it. You're the, you do some other type of a Facebook group, and it, you're very good with type. I'll critique you much on that. I kind of nail it. Photography, nice and clean and good. Don't forget the worship for bringing worship into a day. If the balance here is good. This big block at really great. And you have this nice, cool, um, shorter, nice type hierarchy to this. I think this looks, you know, you could say I could put something behind it like a picture. You know, sometimes it's to, to stay clean. This was my favorite. I thought the typography here really matched with the childlike theme of the book. So I think the, the image and the type are like perfectly matched together. I think this looks good. I think this really looks good. You might need to no longer shelf it's a noble only way just making sure just this is a very all this is very type and the photo let's move on Cole ah you've just submitted this this morning and I'm so glad you did, you did it yesterday and I just saved it so I didn't have a chance to really really look at it but I, I remember just being really impressed by the illustration work I asked you what you used to illustrate this and I haven't heard back because I just asked it about Brought it. Love to know. How, like maybe I could be wrong. A look at Pretty Little Liars, which is a, a, a TV show, but I have an idea of kind of what it's about. It's kind of about getting in trouble, and you know, they're women who are you know not really. So there's lots of happens between these young. And they're growing up because I think the show while, so I think now they're not started out as teenagers. So if anyone knows more about that show, I'll watch an episode. But this interpretation of it, I like the script because it really goes. Inch. My only issue would be uh, the gaps. Hard time with gaps between grip tight faces, and I might just tighten the gaps a little bit because when you have wide gaps and grips, um, and and also lower any lowercase lettering they don't stand well together because they seem disjointed so you have all these little gaps here i would just tighten it you don't have to tighten it a lot this is through it ever so because right Zoom in, and it kind of just to the A and a little dish characters about that because I think about this book is the illustration, and I love this is my favorite part of it is this ribbon or this bow that's in her hair. I think the way it kind of folds and bends is brilliant. I just think this looks really good, especially right here. I could not draw anything like that. And I know the debate came up the other day. Do I need to be a good illustrator? 
to be a good graphic designer? And I guess my short answer was it's not required, but it sure is beneficial to kind of have some illustration skills. I wish I did. I really, I can't, I couldn't illustrate this. I'm not, a, I've been able to survive as a graphic designer, but I sure wish, you know, I could do some illustrative stuff too. So that's my goal for 2020 is to practice procreate more and to kind of get more into that. But well done, wonderful job. Just love how that looks. Okay, so Nita, I think you just might have submitted this last. Well, no, this was an older book. Never mind. Okay, so we have this. So women who think too much. So I kind of see what your concept was. We have two, which is going to be two O's, and you decided to wrap the O around the woman. What I might do is instead of it's, it doesn't read quite right when you have the big O like that. So what I might even do is find a more prominent O like the O in women and put her in there and then put who think on one line. So who think and then do have this be bigger, maybe a different typeface and have it be like that and then have who think here. So what's great about that is the title is in this nice central area and you don't have a title that spreads too far. Because right now your title goes here, and goes all the way down here. So that's a big section dedicated to the title. And you can even put this on two lines if you have more room. Um, so that you can maybe make that a little bit bigger, maybe put it in a box of some sort. I love your background. I think that's really nice, this background here. I think the background, you shouldn't touch it. I like kind of the purples and the pinks. I think that looks great. I like kind of the watercolor look. You got a little blue down there too. So I think just kind of tightening up the title would really help and maybe moving away from having the second O be where the woman is and finding a more prominent O to put that there. But I like your background and it's a great, great start. All right, Natalie. This is another great, we got some great Photoshop people here who really know how to compose images. And I asked her, how much, how many photos did you compose for this or, or manipulate? And I was thinking it was eight. She said like two or three. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. It only took two or three images. I thought it was more than that. But I think this is really compelling and interesting. So the secret sea world, what I might do, and I know why you did this, is you have this little stroke here. I would thicken that up and make it a little bit thicker or just have it be on one side instead of just a stroke all the way around. So kind of like one side here that you'll see with type. And this is something that you usually have to hand do an illustrator. Or you could just have it be flat and not have any kind of outline or stroke at all. Kind of one or the other I think would look good. I like this type here. I like the type overall. I just, just the thinness of it. Um, kind of when you zoom out, you kind of lose that little thin stroke. But in terms of the photo work, I think it's really neat and interesting. I like this part of the face and how you have this kind of reflection. I think that looks really eerie and interesting and, and not eerie, but I guess mysterious. And what I would do is you're probably doing, this is, would be great as a real embossed effect instead of just a Photoshop. Because when you do embossing in Photoshop, sometimes it can, it can look a little dated if it, 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 it's kind of hard to, to do that in Photoshop. But a real embossing effect, which you might have assumed that was going to happen, but it's hard. It's really hard to do an embossing effect that looks realistic. I still struggle with it. Um, so this would be great as a real embossed effect. I like the bottom here, the fish. I really like this quite a lot. Um, so great job with the Photoshop work. Um, I think it would be really interesting if this was, maybe we had one of these above the type and then one below the type. You might add kind of this really interesting layered effect and how it could play with the type. But excellent, excellent work here. I love the Photoshop work here, Natalie. Okay, so this is a PDF. I guess they sent this to me in Messenger. So this is another one. So this is kind of great because they give us the bleed and, and everything seems to be in order in terms of how they set this up and the file. So you have the cover on the right and the, and the, and the back on the left and then you have the spine in the middle. I, would, um, I don't think your barcode can be there on the spine. So I might even eliminate the barcode. Of course, that depends on your country. I don't think you need a barcode on the spine. I, I love the idea of the green, and I love the idea of the tea with because when you have tea is organic. We have these of you know just kind of 
texture though. You can find another talk more the idea that this is a health book. I want healthy living. So kind of a texture that so that's why the really good. I love the texture. So I just wonder, I mean I think it's good on its own, but I want fighting against the cognitive having cracks. Dryness, I think dryness. So what about like stone slate and, and it's a stone slate or wood or something that would be more um, when you think about a spa or you think about health or you think about nature, something like that. Um, also with your type, I'm having a hard time reading that. So you might need to explore a bolder typeface or find a way to shorten this or divide this a little bit more. If you were to remove the texture, it might help. I really Over, have a leaf, something like that. really simple. Free up your back, buy some of your read. Like your uh, placing these excellent. Make sure I didn't miss a the uh, yeah, that texture is just and you want something that and smooth, organic. But I like how, so this is a really great, I kind of like how this is, I didn't see it, oh, it does go on, I see. I like it to continue on the front. I think that would bring that more healthy feeling to it. We'll see how, okay. Okay, so this is her first book. Surprises, it's a while because, so I the book so the one, there's this dire background image it's got this which adds to the effect and it helps me put me book everything is soft this has a soft filter blue there's no almost like we are in the winter deadness of the and i like how it really brings that out quite a bit I like how the snow comes here and they have a perfect little place for the top author to go. So I love the balance of this. I might cut your little things here, kind of just shave those off just a little bit. Then just being very picky. I don't have a lot to say because the typography is excellent. I think this is good. It's very simple. I'd love to see a back of this and how you maybe wrap it around the back. That'd be kind of interesting. But I know this is kind of one of your first book design projects. So, you know, we always got to start somewhere in terms of our ambition, but I really Ah, uh, hopefully we got you. Ernest Hemingway, the old man. So let's talk about the cover. I like, I like how the cloud man is kind of in, kind of adds a nice eerie effect to it. Um, bird would be nice in clouds, but since I bring up this bird, it almost kind of in another like he's not a part of this world. So I don't even think you need the bird plays a big part of the story. So I would put some clouds on top. So the bird feels like he's a man in the clouds. He's not just flying over top of everything. But I'll also make sure you have lots of margin. So Ernest Hemingway, stay there, but maybe just put him, put it right here instead and have a little more margin. Same thing with here. I like how this is stacked. So I would just have it right here. Just have a little bit more margin. You can't have, you always got to have double the margin you think you do with books. I might feathered. Uh, so what I might need to do, you may not, if it's not required. image that's okay. okay we could have the o just like that kind of dividing the man here and then you have some clean type or maybe have some splashing little bits of water over there instead instead of trying to do the man sleeve that might look really interesting okay so we have another one 
This is a different take on it. I definitely like the first one better. I think this looks more compelling, more professional. Um, I'm not a fan of the type of this because it's so different. You kind of have an edgy 90s typeface. You kind of have um, kind of a softer, rounder typeface. And then you have a really super duper round typeface here. So I don't know if these really pair super well together. I think if you reworked your type and took out all the effects, like the strokes and stuff, and you just had plain kind of type type here, and you had this as kind of a plain image, like a silhouette, it could be a whole different modern take on this book. I think so. But I really appreciate, I like, I think this is kind of going in a better direction. All right, Luke. Oh, I think this was a big popular one. Let's just take a moment to soak this in. So this is great, great Photoshop work. Well done. And I know someone in the comments said, oh, your R's cut off, but that's not a R being cut off. That's the tree coming down. So there's this layered effect that's really, really interesting. Um, I really, really like this a lot. So I like how you have a continu uh, continuity here between your front and the spine. It kind of continues over. Everything is very readable. I would just add a tiny bit more margin here. So maybe have your margin be here. So that would mean, uh, let's have your margin be here. So that means your type would just come down just a little bit. That's just being very picky. I love this interesting, what I like about this is all of this is very cool. Cool, cool, cool colors. And you have this little pop of warm tones right here in the lamp. So my eye is drawn to the warm tones because everything else is so, you know, dark and moody. And this is so bright and gives a light of hope. And notice how he kind of has it casting out. He probably did kind of a circle and did kind of a Gaussian blur, some kind of blur effect to kind of get that lighting to, to kind of radiate past the lamp. And I think this Photoshop work is excellent. Well done. I love the warm, to pop a warm tone and the little kind of lightning bugs that are all around. And you also have these same lightning bugs on the back. And what I like about this is how you change the mock-up. I love to change mock-ups and kind of customize them. And I like how you put the character in the front here because it makes it a really good sales poster. Um, you could use this on pr promo materials very easily. I like how it's darker on the back. I can really focus in on the testimonials or the, the, the forwards or whatever those are on the back, like recommendations. Um, so I really don't have any critiques negatively. I just want to really appreciate kind of your book here and kind of the, um, let me know where you found your photos. I'd love to be able to, to get those type of photos to use in a book cover. So this is definitely one of my favorites. So I just want to kind of appreciate that. Uh, the only thing is your name. I just now noticed it or the author name. I think it would look good down here because you definitely want to separate the author from the title. That's kind of a common theme with books for some reason, but just kind of maybe having it down here. I know it'll mess up your perfect little thing, but maybe if you just had it just a little light name right there, I think it would really stand out enough. Okay. We have a lot of different ones from her. Ooh, so this one's great. I love the illustration work here on the front cover. This is really lovely. I like this kind of circle here and how this plays together with each other. I like the title, how it's in the hair. I think one thing that would make this in, um, really cool is kind of cleaning up the background and making it a solid color or making it a texture, but kind of lessening the busyness of the background because this is so simple and so clean. I want this to be the main attraction of the book. And if you were to simplify the background, it would even make it more of a dramatic focal point. Um, same thing for the back. And I like how you continue this color, though, across. That's kind of interesting. I like that a lot. M remember, your barcodes have to be on a solid color and a lighter color, too. So sometimes barcodes kind of get in the way. You can put a barcode on a color, but you have to kind of make sure there's enough contrast. Like having it coming through there, the publisher might say we need to have it on a, a white background or something. So um, just being very picky here, but love this this work here. I think the hair is perfect. If you did this yourself, that's incredible. But yeah, simplifying that background to focus on what's awesome about this book, and that is the, the main focal point, which is right here. And you're very talented at this, I can see. Ooh, look at this. Look at that sharp photo. That is wonderful. So this is very contemporary and modern. 
So love in black and white. And I love, speaking of love, I say love a lot, but I do love this ampersand. It's got the nice style to it. Let me know what typeface that is because I've been looking for a really good ampersand for another project. And I've been looking for one just like that. So if you just happen to know the typeface you use for this, I'd love to know. Some kind of beautiful serif typeface. And look at this nice font pairing in action. We have a serif typeface and we have a sans serif typeface. So you notice how those pair well together because they're not fighting against each other. And there's contrast. So you have a thinner weight and a thicker weight. And you have a sans serif and a serif. So you notice the contrast there makes, makes the type hierarchy really stand out. Wonderful spine, wonderful back. I don't really have any specific. I mean, I just wonder if you can extend the photo all the way out to here. And that just might be because the cropping is that way. But that might be more kind of based on the grid system. It might look a little better to have that extending out. But other than that, I think this is absolutely stunning. Oh, and here's kind of your mock-up. That looks like a real book you can buy in the store. I want to buy it. It seems like a very interesting topic. And here's the back. Oh, and this was actually one of my favorites. You did a couple of really good ones. Um, so let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and open this up first. So this is your children's illustrative book. And I believe you found the illustrations somewhere, but the way you composed them and the headline is really, really good. This looks like a, a lot of your books, I feel like they're real books. Like I can go to Barnes and Noble, I can go to the bookstore, I can pick up your book and, and not even doubt at all it was a student project. I would think this was a real book. The typography is excellent. I think the only thing, let me go ahead and open up. Here's the whole book. So nice spread. I love, I, this is one thing I appreciate. You see this? It zoops all the way down through here. And notice the two-tone type here. So you have the white type and the black type, and it happens to be cut by the mountains. I like that kind of playful nature of this entire book. I don't have any critiques. Maybe the ampersand. Seems kind of more of a formal serif typeface, and this is more of kind of a more caricature uh, kind of typeface. So I almost wonder if you might need to hand draw one, that because I know this typeface probably doesn't come with the ampersand. Most of these don't. The decorative typefaces don't. So it might be a point where you might need to hand draw one that looks close to that. That's the only thing that looks off is this looks more formal than the other type. But other than that, I think this is fabulous. See the dog popping out of the O? genius. I think that looks great. So this is well done. I wouldn't have any critiques for this outside of just the ampersand. I think this looks wonderful, wonderful balance and layout. There's just some more further pictures of it. You can go in the Facebook group and kind of study these a little bit. Love the dog popping out of the O. Now that's an interesting way to use the O. Okay, Julia. Uh, we have originals here. So I know these are the originals for this one. So this is the original, kind of like, eh, you know, kind of your typical travel book. They didn't put a lot of thought into this or excitement into this. But this is what she did, and I think it's much better. Let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in. So old, blah, new, ah, isn't that much better? It's more modern. This has an interesting kind of arrow that points down right to the title. I think this is a, a, a nice refreshing color green. I think it's great for uh, Ireland, Dublin, you know, you think of green. And this uses green, but it uses more of like this bright. There's no way a clover is that bright green, but this is kind of more of a fun, softer green. It has a little hint of blue in it. I think it adds a little more modern uh, kind of flair to the book. So well done. We also have a Stephen King reduce. This is the original. Stephen King. So you notice how Stephen King has that same type on everything and it's always like gold and embossed. I mean, his name is everywhere on these books and for good reason because he's the best-selling author ever. And this is the redo. So way more kind of once again, I, the theme here is going more modern and contemporary. So old and new. So I, I think this is a much more compelling photo. This is classic. And, you know, this book has been around for a while. It's classic. But when you try to rethink the concept of a book, I think, you, and you have the hand here, which is really cool how you brought the original hand back in. So I, I really appreciate that, how you did that. And I, I really think this is a more interesting cover than the original. 
I mean, what do you guys think? I, I like his more, uh, I like his, uh, I guess, more streamlined contemporary typeface for his name too. Because this reminds me of the 80s. I think of Stephen King novels. I think of the 80s. I think of this kind of, I mean, I like this typography, but it just kind of is older. And I kind of like this refreshed look, this handwritten thinner. And I think it looks really good on the spine too. So I really appreciate this more modern take on the book. I actually find it more interesting. Let me take a drink of water. My voice, whew, it's been an hour. So glad you guys are still hanging around. Okay, so this is uh, Jeremy. So let's open up Jeremy's. So this was a political, a sci-fi political satire. So I guess it's kind of, that's a whole new genre in itself, I guess, political sci-fi. So they're going to kind of make fun of kind of, the, what's wrong with the political system, but in kind of more of a futuristic sci-fi way. So I don't know like the whole synopsis, but I wonder if they did the 3D rendering or kind of where you found this photo. I think that's interesting. What I might do is of course add a little more margin. So just make sure you have more margins on the side. What I would do is maybe have a little bit more contrast with your type because right now this is the same as this. So it's all running together as the same title, but that's not the case. So I think your name could probably be a little bit smaller right here. So that'll help break down the contrast. I would focus more in on this thing. Just zoom in maybe 20%. And Planet Battles, I love the diagonal kind of movement of this. I think that looks really good. Planet Battles, what I might do is um, even tighten the spacing between these lettering and maybe have it be right here. Planet Battles, kind of like here, kind of have more balance. So you kind of have this downward, everything's focusing on this image. So you notice how you have the smaller subtitle and everything is focusing in on the focal point. I think, think that that might look really good, but I like the cleanliness, cleanliness and the white background. And I kind of like this. This is a very compelling photo. Not sure where you found it, but you know, or if you did the 3d rendering on it, but I like this. Okay. Jennifer. Oh, this is one you just submitted about five minutes. I was very lucky. <laughs> I just saw this right before I went live. So this was kind of a last minute um, thing. So is this part of, I think these are two different books. I might've accidentally renamed one, but this is supposed to be a part of, there it is. That's the right one. Okay, so you might've done two books. So this is part of a series. So this is the one we're critiquing. So the idea of a series kind of having this design system that it can, can expand on a lot of different items. I think the idea of the design system works well with the color and the silhouette kind of reminds me of the Apple old Apple commercials from the mid two thousands where they had the iPod and they had the guy with the silhouette and he just had the iPod as color kind of reminds me a little bit of that. And so this is the cover. So what I might do, I might like this. I like kind of the pattern on the back, this gold, and unless you're kind of emulating that being, a real gold stamp that would probably look good but i would make sure there's some distance there so maybe put the little stamp right here or maybe better yet you don't have a lot go going on down here so put the stamp here so then that'll kind of clean the top up a little bit and that's it's quite an intricate typeface and maybe that's kind of goes along with the book but i might find something that is not quite as intricate for the typeface for this bottom part um, just because this is very detailed and this is very detailed. So you have two fonts that are put together that are both very detailed. And so that's not offering a whole lot of contrast. So I'd either make one really simple or make the other really simple, but try not to have both be very detailed and different. But I like the idea of the theme. It's really neat to kind of see all of them put together like that and to see this entire kind of series or, or novel. And you had another one. So this was one you did a couple years ago. And um, I like the embossing effect on here. I was probably going to emulate a real embossing effect. So to me, I know right away what kind of book it is. It's kind of like a mistress, triangle, jealousy, love, sex, all that kind of stuff. So definitely romance novel. I know you clearly communicated what it is right away. Um, so if this is the kind of person you're trying to appeal to, you really want to grab them from like a sexual sense. You definitely did that. Um, I like the spine. I like everything here. What I might do is we have a lot of focal points here. So you have the man's chest, kind of a side of a woman, then you have a bottom, and you have some busty lady down here. I would try to simplify that and maybe either have these be 
screened back. So these aren't as strong and really focus on the woman because it seems like it's focused on her, right? So that's part of the title. So I want this to be the focal point and this to be kind of background images. I don't want that to compete with the bottom photo. Okay, so Jackie, so I think you were still gonna work on the back, but let's go ahead and show people what you have here. So waking up the sun, so she, and I don't know if that's the best resolution. This is probably better. So this is um, an illustration she did um, physically. It's not a digital one. She took this and she was able to scan it and bring it in. And I thought she did a great job digitizing this. This is a beautiful illustration. I love the kind of the watercolor look and, and, and feel of this. It would make a great book cover. And that's exactly her point. So let's go ahead and flip over to the book cover. Waking up the sun. I mean, the only thing I wish is if the sun, I guess that's the moon, isn't it? So that's the moon. So waking up the sun is all part of the book. So I think I like the moon over here on the left. It's kind of intriguing. And waking up the sun. I would almost wish I saw more of this over here, but I think that's just the way it's illustrated. And I think that works really well as a book. So I think this is really good in terms of how you have it divided. I like the typeface. I think it's playful. I think it plays very well with the loose watercolor feeling that you have with your illustration. I might center, since you have this, this is center. So keep that center alignment and put your name here in the center. And I think that would look really good. But I just wanted to kind of really, let's see if I can't bring that up one more time because I really like the way the illustration looks. So we have some really talented artists in this group. And that's another reason why, you know, it's not necessary to be an artist, to be a graphic designer, but it sure is a nice skill to have because it kind of expands your skill set beyond just traditional graphic design projects. She can easily get commissioned to do work for any kind of cover that requires illustration. So wonderful, wonderful work, Jackie. All right, let's see how many people we have left. Okay, we don't have a whole lot of people left, so hang tight. Okay, so Mary Puppins, anything can happen if you let it. It's cute. I really like the layered buildings here. I think that looks interesting. Uh, of course, the umbrella is probably required. What I might do, hmm, I, I think the title is kind of strange over here on the left. So what I might do is bring the title and the umbrella here and then have the dog be kind of faded back as a silhouette or have the dog be hanging on the on the umbrella or some way to bring the title a little bit more toward the center of the book. That's my only concern is, is making sure the title is not too close to the spine. But I love the umbrella and the typeface as well. So I think there's a way we could simplify this book. It might be that the silhouette, all of the city, the city could probably be right here and be okay. So you can have the city here. And then that will give you more sky to work with so that you can uh, be able to have the dog and, the, and all that on there. So that would probably be my only thing is you don't bring down the skyline because you just want to give a hint that it's the city. But the real important part is the Mary Puppins and the umbrella because that'll be the play on Mary Poppins. But very cool concept, very funny, very cute. I really like that. Dan, Dan the man. All right, so I had a chance to kind of ask him some questions about this. So he wants to kind of get into personal finance and write a book, or he's writing a book, or he's getting ready to write a book here in the next couple of years. But when I first read this title, I read the title wrong. And I think there's something we could do to fix that. So this is how I read it. The Complete Guide to Wealth Creation. Understand the start laws of making money work for you. And I'm like, what's a start law? And then I asked him what it said, and it was actually wealth creation. Understand the, this is how it reads, understand the laws of gold. I didn't get that because gold is so far away over here. So what I might do is understand the laws of, put gold right here, and you need to move start down here. It needs to be below this point. So start needs to move down here because I read it as understand the start laws of. That's kind of a natural way to read left to right, line to line. So I would just kind of make sure that's clear in your line. And I think there's a way we could separate all this type. There's a lot of different typefaces. I think you even have papyrus here. So let's definitely change that papyrus typeface. We're not allowed to use Comic Sans or papyrus ever. So change that to something more simple. I think 
um, picking two or three typefaces and that's it. You can't have any more than that. It's kind of restricting your typeface usage. I would close the gap here between your type and, and a way you can really help with this is you got to break this up. So the complete guide to wealth creation is one connected unit. Understanding the laws of gold can be right here. Understanding the laws of gold. And then making money work for you, you might be able to eliminate that. And then take your place amongst the growing population of first generation wealth creators. You're going to have to pick and choose what gets on the cover and what goes on the back. So control your financial freedom might be more important to stay on the front. And maybe this growing your first, you know, just depends. One of these, this or this has to move to the back because you got too much on the front cover. There's a lot of kind of catchphrases here. So I would just clean up your type. I don't have any problem with the coloring or anything or the photos, but just kind of working on your type so it kind of reads more natural and you kind of break this big, big block of text up. It's got to be broken up into more digestible little chunks. Okay, Cora. We have two from Cora. So find your way. She and, um, illustrated this little maze in Illustrator, and I thought that was really creative how she did that. I think this is a great concept of a book. Find your way, and it kind of wraps around the type. I think it looks great. I don't really have any critiques of this. My only thing is maybe tight, uh, making sure this reads nicely as one headline. And it might be that we might need to tighten the spacing just a little bit between the words. Nothing major. Um, but that's the only thing I find. I like the gold and the purple. Those tend to pair very well together. And then we have kind of a, a children's book, which I think has nice balance. I would even make the title a little bit bigger. And I would maybe have the little reindeer. And you can even... You might not be able to put too much behind the antlers, but have just a little bit behind the antlers. So you kind of have this dedicated to the title. Just a little bigger so that they can kind of really kind of see the title over the main character. I mean, you want to have a balance between the two, but it's very good. Okay, Christopher, sorry I'm having to move a little bit quicker as we move through this. So let's see if you have another picture of this because that looks a little blurry. There it is. Let's see what this looks like. So nowhere to hide. So what I might do is zoom in on the gun a little more so that you see the character right here, the gun. Because right now it's a little too small. If you really bring more attention to that, that can be your focal point. And that would play very well with your type. Because it's a little dark on the background. I can see the figure, but I'm afraid that when it's printed, you really won't be able to, to see it. And this might be a UV gloss kind of moment where you put UV gloss on the gun and it kind of shines a little extra. That's more of a printing extra thing you can do. I'd make the title just a ton, or not title, but the author just a little bit smaller so that that yellow type can really stand out. Okay, let's see. I think I've critiqued this one before um, in your last, I don't know why I feel like I've seen this one before, but I like it. He's gone bananas. It's, it's, uh, my my five-year-old son loves Curious George, and I watch all the shows, and I think this is very much on brand. It looks exactly how a Curious George book might like, so it's definitely on point, on brand, and I think it looks good and clean. I don't know why. Have I seen this one before? Maybe you did another Curious George. Maybe that's what it was, but it's great. There's, it's clean. Um, this color might need to be tweaked, the, the blue, just a little bit. I'm not quite sure if you would, you wouldn't lighten it. But you maybe darken it just a tad, just to make sure that doesn't get lost in the yellow. There's another kind of book cover. I think you're still working on the back there. Okay, so we have CC. So I decided to keep your old one and your new one so we can look at both. So this is her, wait, where's the old one? This is the old one. I kind of appreciate the pop of yellow. And um, a lot of people came back and said I have a hard time reading it, reading the title, and I, I can see that. But I think with some tweaks, you might be able to make this work. And what I like about this is there's different colors happening. It kind of reminds me of the 70s, more of a 70s. Yellow is very 70s. I mean, if you lived in the 70s or had parents who lived in the 70s, yellow is a big part of it. You even had yellow appliances, you had like light green, ugly <laughs> appliances, and there, there was even yellow appliances. So it kind of really does bring out the 70s more. And this is the new revised one, and it's more readable. And in that case, I like it. But I think you lose a little bit of the 70s vibe when you make it all pink. 
because right now it looks more like a book about femininity or, you know, the woman's movement because it is so pink. And I think a balance between the two are making this readable, but yet keeping more than one color to kind of give you that very colorful 70s vibe. Because when you think about the 70s, you're thinking about yellows, oranges, lime, uh, not lime greens, but this kind of pale green. You're thinking of all these different colors. Uh, you're not thinking of just one color. So you did make it readable, and I like that. But there's something about this that, that feels more 70s, even though it's harder to read the title. Okay, we're almost there, Brittany. Oh, you just did this one this morning, so I get a chance to really look at this. So I love space. I love sci-fi. I'm a big Trekkie. I love Star Trek. So if you have any Trekkies out there, live long and prosper, because I love everything Star Trek. So I'm totally geeking out right now, but that's okay. I'm very proud of it. So I can really appreciate kind of the look and feel of this book. And the typeface is what kind of really stood out to me the most because I think it looks, uh, it pairs very well with the, the sci-fi nature of the book. Let me take a sip of water. And the Photoshop work and the blending work she did is nice. So look how she has this bright spot kind of in the space and sky. And this is kind of darker. The contrast is really brilliant and lovely. This is a really well done book. You kind of have this interesting kind of spaceship, kind of a deep space nine kind of looking ship. Um, and then you have kind of a little peak of the inside of the ship. So I think that's really great how they put this together. This is fine. I, I really have not a lot of negative critiques. I just have positive things to say about it. I think it looks really neat, nice, really eerie, very, you know, very sci-fi, but not cheesy sci-fi. This looks high-end sci-fi. There's a big difference. It's not, oh, it's a baby sci-fi. No, this is a very modern sci-fi look, and, and I really like the way the typeface, very good choice of typeface and space. There's a little bit of wider spacing between the typeface, and I think that really brings it home. And then you have a very interesting subject matter, too. Okay. All right, so this is the original photo. So you have a dancer in front of the moon. This is what she did. She made, this is one of my students that's not on Facebook, but they love to send me, uh, so glad they still participate and they just private message me on Udemy, their projects. But what I like is how she was able to kind of use the content aware tool or, or clone tool, or however she did it. And she got rid of the woman and was able to add their own silhouettes on that. I thought that was kind of more advanced, intermediate to advanced work. So I thought that was really well done. You can't tell the woman was ever there. And I like the overall, let's see if I can't bring this into Photoshop real quick. And what I like about this is it's readable, the balance is good, there's not anything that's too big or anything that's too small. And you have this interesting kind of, this whole silhouette is the focal point. And you have a title that's not trying to compete with the focal point. It's up here, it's white, it's simple, it's clean, and you have this simple, clean silhouette too. So you have both of these are simple and clean and it looks like they go really well together. So I think this is well done. Um, I think your spine looks good. The size of everything looks good. The balance is excellent. You know, I don't really have a whole lot of negative criticism for this. I think it looks fine. Okay, so chosen. I love the texturing here and I love the cleanliness of it. So this book doesn't use photography and we haven't seen a whole lot of books that just use type and texture, and I like, oops, sorry, I just hit my desk, and I like how this is so simple, and so you have kind of this O, which remains black, and then you have kind of the red chains that wrap around it, so you can kind of see where the text is there, it reads as one word because it's black, they could have easily made that red, but I like how they re kept it black because you it's like the title itself is being pulled by this chain. It has this very dramatic action to it. And, and I like that pulling effect that it has. And I like the the written in that interesting typeface. I think this looks very interesting. Um, it's very interesting, kind of this two-tone look. And I almost wonder what it would look like if it was all a solid background, but the two-tone really helps make the chain in the middle feel more dramatic. And I think that's probably why you had it there. I think this looks fantastic how it is. It's simple, and I wouldn't touch it. I think it looks great. I almost wonder if you need this border. Uh, I think it would look really good and more clean without the border, you know. So if you remove the border, I wonder, just wonder how that would look. Because uh, it's such a strong border, you want all the focus to be here. 
you don't want any focus to be on a silly border. So just get rid of the border and really focus in on this brilliant way that you did the O. I thought the concept there was really strong. Last one. Oh, here's the high resolution photo of what we talked about earlier. You can see all the little detailed work. I'm not quite sure how she got that photo so crisp and juicy. Like it's just so like detailed and crisp, but not overly sharp. So the, the subject matter is incredibly interesting. And I think we already talked about this one in terms of separating her name a little bit from the title so they don't all, right now it reads as one big block. And we want to be, make sure we separate that just a little bit and move it down. And I would think you may not need a lot of this embossing effect and just do like a simple green foil stamping or some way to bring that title out. But I think you can have more flat design here because you already have such a complicated photo. I wouldn't want to have too much going on. But you know, let me know kind of where you found that photo and kind of what you did with that in terms of the manipulation. If you, if this is kind of what you guys, what you did, or if you found the photo this way, just kind of let me know what you did in terms of the Photoshop work. And we're done. That was it. Look at all these that we reviewed. Let me know who you think is the top winner. I like to choose a best in show winner and like to, you know, put them in front of everybody and kind of give them a congratulations. Who do you think had the best cover overall? Um, in terms of layout, title, focal point, how it's presented, the concept. There's a lot of ways you can judge a best in show, but they really need to hit on all marks to be a best in show winner. So let me know, post who you think should be the best in show winner. And in the next day or two, I'll be able to post that. I also post kind of some runner up winners as well, or those who I thought really did a great job in it. So I'm going to hang around for like three more minutes. I need to go and post all of those discount codes to all my classes. I think it already just posted or landed on my website or on my Facebook page. I'm also emailing this out to Udemy folks who don't have Facebook. So if you don't have Facebook, you can grab the coupons in the email that you got. But yes, please go through this. I have discount coupons, $9.99. I almost never do that. Well, I do it every once in a while, but I'm going to be doing it less and less than $9.99 price. So if you ever were interested in getting another course, this is probably a really good time to go ahead and read and find out what course is for you. I have a freelance course, which I recommend for anybody who's thinking about going freelance and you're in the creative space or so you're a graphic designer. This is definitely a, a class I recommend. Lots of great downloadable resources for you. Um, and also I have the newest master graphic design through projects, a very hands-on practical project-based class. Uh, so just take a look at that list. I'll be posting it on the Facebook groups afterwards. And also one last thing, please, please leave a review. Reviews are the best way you can help me out in terms of um, me being able to do this for a living is being able to leave that review. Reviews mean a lot in terms of the search rankings and kind of how my class shows up. So please, if you have a chance, review my classes. I'm on Skillshare too. For those Skillshare users, I don't want to forget about you. Um, you can find all my latest classes there that you can also buy on Udemy. So if you're on Skillshare, you have access to all these classes if you have a premium subscription. That's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions about anything design related, class related? You just, I'm gonna just stay here for another three minutes since this didn't take quite, it took an hour and 20 minutes to review everything. It's not so bad. So I'm just going to hang out. If you guys have any, if you have anything you want to um, ask me, I know there's only 11 people live. I know I would get about a thousand people or so in 24 hours, but I have a lot of people who can't, you know, they're working and they're eating lunch and they're sleeping and, you know, they can't always pop in here live. And this is long. This is a long video. So I understand if some of you guys are not around right now. So just let me know if you have a question and I have my affinity designer class coming out and it's not just affinity design. It's everything related to affinity. So publisher, which is like an InDesign. We have Designer, which is like uh, Illustrator. And I have another teacher I'm teaching with and he's doing Affinity Photo, which is like a Photoshop replacement. So if you ever thought about the Affinity products, um, I am doing a class on that right now. And we're building all sorts of things together in this class. And I walk through it from the very beginning, very basics for each program. So even if you're an Adobe user and you've thought about switching, you know, I talk about some of the benefits and some of the downsides and, and about the program. And one of the big benefits is it's a lot, a lot more affordable than the Adobe products. Um, some of the downsides is there's a, a tool or two missing I wish they had, but overall I was able to accomplish most design projects using the software 
and you know I was pretty happy pretty happy with it it's kind of neat um, some of the things that we were able to kind of accomplish in this class so that'll be released next week I hope and then that's it for me and then I'm going to be taking a month uh, just to kind of update some older classes I'm going to be updating the graphic design master class and adding all new lessons and trying to update the audio on some of those some of those projects are a year old so I wanted to update a couple of those projects to bring in some new tools and ideas that I've learned over the last year to keep that class really fresh. So that's the master, uh, the graphic design master class, which I'll be updating shortly. That's pretty much it. So everyone did do a great job. I agree with Jennifer. Everyone did an awesome job. I'm incre incredibly impressed by your talents and the fact that you take the time to do a real project with us because I think it really helps to encourage other students to participate when they see others do it as well. So let me know what you think the next design challenge should be. It's been a while since we've done a digital project. So if you're interested in doing a social media post, a mobile app design, I'd love to do something in the digital space because we really haven't, we've done a lot of print projects lately, which is great. It was most of what I did as a graphic designer, but I would love to focus on a digital focus project for the next design challenge. So give me ideas. That's pretty much it, everybody. I hope everybody has a great I'm getting ready to have lunch, but you guys might be two o'clock in the morning. But anyway, just checking out and check out those coupon codes. It's for four days only. So once they're expired, that's it. I can't offer them again for another month. But anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And this was really a joy for me.